What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Welcome to Sia's Domain. Now on today's video, I want to do a little bit of a reaction to this Tiffany Cross monologue about Sage Steele, Van Jones and Carlos Watson. These are black voices who have difference of opinion from what the liberal lamestream media wants you to have as a prominent black person in this world. Now for today's video, for all intents and purposes, I'm only going to do the first part where she talks about Sage Steele. So Tiffany Cross does this little hit piece about Sage Steele. Sage Steele being an ESPN anchor who is very vocal about her racial status and we will see the exact reason why she's going after Sage Steele at this point. Also, I need to mention that Sage Steele happens to be an open conservative and in a podcast that she did recently, she was told that she's been compared to Candice Owens and that she's been called Candice Owens of ESPN. Now, while she laughed about it, she did say she has a lot of respect for Candice Owens and look, say what you want about that woman. You may agree, you may not agree with everything she says or her rhetoric or whatever, but the thing is that she does deserve respect because what she does it takes a whole lot of balls to do it but anyway without further ado let's jump straight into this thing and i'll give you my reaction as i go along please feel free to let me know your own thoughts in the comment section below now without further ado here we go okay carlos watson sage steel van jones what do these three folks have in common well they're all people who have been prompted up by wealthy or powerful white americans well, let's stop there. First of all, they are in the same position as she is. She works for MSNBC. Now, Sage Steel works for ESPN. ESPN is owned by Walt Disney and another company. ESPN owns 80%. I mean, Walt Disney owns 80% of ESPN, so they are owned by a white company. MSNBC, even though right now they are replacing their CEO with a black CEO, who I don't remember her name at the moment, but they are replacing her, him with a black CEO, not taking away anything from the black CEO that is coming in, but one of the things that I know that MSNBC NBC plays is identity politics. They want you to think that, oh, liberals, they are on the black on the side of black people. But MSNBC is being owned by Microsoft as well as NBC. Both companies owned by white people. Microsoft is owned by Bill Gates. Last I checked, he's white. MSNBC is owned by Comcast, and the head of Comcast and the owner of Comcast is, is Brian L. Roberts. They are all white people, white people conglomerates. So if they're being propped up by white people, she's being propped up by white people. That makes her a hypocrite. And that's usual when it comes to these liberals. Rest assured, anytime they're accusing someone of something, they're most likely guilty of that exact same thing. And yet, we, the keepers of the culture, don't really rock with any of them like that. Now, what exactly are these keepers of the culture? I did kind of like dig into this a little bit. And when it comes to African culture, it's very, very diverse. Or when you are talking about the culture. So, well, I try to find what could be very, very much related to the culture. But I found this group of people that call themselves the keepers of the culture. And you look, they dress like Africans. They try to take uh, an advantage of the African heritage. They act like as if, yes, they understand the culture or whatnot. But then when you dig deep into what this is all about they talk about storytelling that they are part of storytellers they want to talk about the african experience in america as well as the african american experience and this is what they focus on as part of their culture keeping they say this entails of story what they, they they go on to say our oh, keepers of the culture this is the philadelphia uh, group and this is their mission statement storytelling group is committed to telling the stories of africans and african American in america experience as our model states our mission is telling our story claiming our glory well that sounds pretty good i'm with you all uh, so far so good now it says this entails stories that build us up as a people filling us with hope pride joy and love now in my own personal opinion when you talk about success stories like oprah or tyler perry or you talk about success stories like 50 cent jay-z and the rest of them that gives me pride and joy because these people came from the bottom and now they're on top but what these people go on to say is conversely we must share the true and often untold stories of pain and trauma that makes up the black american experience Tragic and senseless murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and way too many others of our race reminds us of painful narratives of 400 years plus of trauma and abasement of our lives, of, of the lives of Africans in America. Have you seen what's important to these people? The names that fetch money. The names like Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and the likes of them. These are the names that fetch money. These are names of people or 
part of the African culture. And if you want to talk about African experience, what about those kids that have died from gangbanging? What about all the Jaslyn Adams and the likes of them? So, so, so many year in, year out. What about those pains? What about those family pains? And those people, Africans as well? Isn't that an African-American experience right there in America? No, that's not important to them. So if this is keeping the culture and you want to segregate and specify your culture on the deaths of Africans or African-Americans at the hands of police, count me out of that culture. But this is what the liberals want you to think black people need to believe. Black people need to stay tuned to. Black people need to focus on. Instead of all the success stories like Tiffany Cross herself, who's another success story, or Joy Reid, who are success stories. Nope, don't focus on those people. Nope, they are still oppressed as they are, because that's what they want you to believe. But anyway, let's keep going. Now, obviously, the three of these folks are most definitely black faces. However, they are not necessarily black voices. And there's a difference. Let me explain. Take a listen to these half-witted, self-hating remarks from Sage Still. Half witted self hating remarks. Hmm. Okay. Barack Obama chose black and he's biracial. I'm like, well, congratulations to the president. That's his thing. I, I think that's fascinating consider, considering his black dad was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. But hey, mm -hmm. you do you. <laughs> what? Okay, so basically, they're say, still trying to say something about Barack Obama, Barack Obama being a biracial person. And this is how I see Barack Obama, as a biracial person. Matter of fact, if you ask Kenyans about Obama, they are not too fond of him because he never did anything for his... Um, you know, ancestry, whatever, heritage or whatever you want to call it. He never did anything for his black side of things like his African heritage, right? Because his father is uh, African. So he claims to be black. But where does this whole idea of if you have a biracial lineage or if you're biracial in any shape or form or you have a drop of blood that is not of white heritage, where does it actually span from? It actually spans from a racist history. It's called the one drop rule. Now, let me read this out from the Kellogg's Insight for you. The history of racial classification, the classification of biracial people as black is tied to the legacy of racist laws that relied on the so-called one drop rule, which dictates that which dictated that even a tiny amount of black ancestry uh, meant a person who was considered black. And this is what Tiffany Cross is saying. Like, this person, because you are biracial, you are automatically black. But that ideology, that way of thinking is spanning from a racist history, from a white supremacist history. Let's read on a little bit. Now, it says, the, drop, the one drop rule, which social scientists call hypodescent. Hypodescent means that a group consider themselves superior to those that are inferior. And if any of them should mix with those inferior people, will only be able to have an inferior baby. So biracial people are considered as inferior than, you know, the white people themselves. Anyway, it says, so that's what hypodescent means. It says, as, a recent, uh, as recently as the 1980s, a woman applying for a passport was told she could not call herself white because she had a black ancestor. Four generations back, although the law is now defunct, studies show that many people still think of those who are biracial as black. I will leave this study in that description section below because it's really interesting for you to read about this thing so that you can find out where the social construct idea of biracial peoples are automatically black is coming from and how people are still following and perceiving people who are biracials as black whereas biology says they are truly not it's a social construct so anyway let's move on to what she had to say to actually discredit sage from what she said because sage to me has said absolutely nothing wrong and she is a biracial child i don't know what tiffany uh uh i don't know what tiffany crosses uh um, ancestry is like because she doesn't really give that much information online we don't know whether she has biracial parents i mean whether she has white and black parent or whatnot but if she doesn't how exactly can she understand what a biracial person feels like and how can a biracial person forgo one side of their parents and they'll stick to another side because that's what society tells them to do anyway let's keep going so that is undoubtedly a black face, whether or not she knows it, but it is most definitely not a black voice. What exactly do they mean by it's a black face and most definitely not a black voice? These people continue to coin things to actually get black people on their side, get black people thinking a certain way. That's what these black liberals are doing. They 
don't want you to stray off that oppression plantation mentality. They want you to stay with that mentality consistently. So black voice has to be different from black face or whatever. They'll create and coin things like the black face of white supremacists, just like they did to, um, I keep forgetting his name, Larry Elder recently. So anyway, let's hear what her sorry excuse is. I'm sure someone is giving themselves a big diversity pat on the back by having that modern day minstrel show say step and fetch it on the airwaves spewing her continued nonsense. Now, let's now, absolutely nothing. She had nothing. She had no comeback to that particular statement. All she did was rain a whole bunch of insults, a whole bunch of insults. And this is what liberals do. They have no argument. And once they have no argument about a certain topic or a certain opinion or about a certain thing, what they usually do is they relate and fall back on their, you know, insults or rain of insults, literally calling her uh, a menstrual whatever. Because right now, liberals, they don't classify women as women anymore. More they classify women by what women can do in terms of a function in their body. Either they call them people with uteruses or people who are menstruating, or these things are demeaning to women, but all in the name of inclusivity, birthing people, they call them all sorts of names. So she's just mentioned one of those things and used it as an insult to this person spewing nonsense. She never told you exactly why. And this is the reason why I made this video so that people can understand the reason why I really do not support these people. People like this, they push and spew race baiting narratives like this because they don't have any solid argument to defend their own kind of ideology or reasoning. All they want to do is continue to spew, divide, 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 and hatred on people who have their own opinion. And they will even eat one of their own if that person decides to have a difference of opinion, even if that opinion is fact or logical. Anyways, you guys, enough said about this whole thing. I want to hear what you guys have to say about her reaction towards Sage Steel. Let me know in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, and ding that bell for notification for whenever I upload. I'm going to be doing the next part of this video really, really soon. And, you know, I'll talk to you guys again next time. In the meantime, have a great week. Take care of yourself. Peace. Ensayas out of here. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye now.